The NATO summit has concluded. Leaders of the Western Alliance gathered in Madrid for three days for the group's annual summit. And topping the agenda was the war in Ukraine. NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg said that the alliance has agreed to a new strategic concept and has addressed the global food crisis, a fallout of the Russia-Ukraine war. Stoltenberg also took note of Moscow's reaction to Finland and Sweden joining the alliance. And therefore also, we are also taking note of the messages from Moscow actually, uh, that uh, it doesn't change so much, uh, much that Finland and Sweden are joining the alliance. While well, they have communicated different messages from Moscow on that issue, uh, the most important thing for us is that Finland and Sweden uh, will become members of uh, the alliance. We are there to protect all allies and of course also Finland and Sweden and we are prepared for all eventualities. This comes after Russian President Vladimir Putin said that Moscow does not have a problem with Sweden and Finland joining the alliance unless there are NATO troops deployed there. As for Sweden and Finland, we do not have such problems with Sweden and Finland that we have with Ukraine, unfortunately. We have no territorial issues or disputes. We have nothing to worry about in terms of membership of Finland and Sweden in NATO. Well, they want it, please. They only must clearly understand that there were no threats to them before. Now, if military contingents and infrastructure are deployed there, we will have to respond in a mirror manner. Meanwhile, French President Emmanuel Macron said Finland and Sweden coming the NATO way is proof that Putin's strategies are wrong. Le fait que ces deux pays aient décidé, malgré leur histoire et leur tradition, de rejoindre notre alliance et que nous ayons pris cette décision est le message stratégique le plus clair qui soit à la Russie et la signature de, du fait que la guerre décidée par le président Poutine en Ukraine est une faute stratégique majeure, y compris pour lui-même. Il a réussi à ce que des États qui jusqu'alors étaient restés dans une posture parfois plus prudente ou plus en réserve à l'égard de l'Alliance décident d'eux-mêmes de la rejoindre. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson also gave his remarks towards the end of the summit, where he highlighted Russia pulling its troops out of Snake Island. Did evidence of the amazing ability of the Ukrainians to fight back, to overcome adversity and to repel the Russians. And look at what has happened uh, just uh, today on Snake Island, where again uh, Russia has had to cede ground. In the end, it will prove impossible for Putin to hold down a country that will not accept his rule. Earlier in the day, the UK announced another $1.2 billion in military aid to Ukraine, with Foreign Secretary Liz Truss calling on NATO members to step up support for the embattled nation. US President Joe Biden also addressed the press and reaffirmed America's unwavering support to Ukraine as the summit was wrapping up. We provided Ukraine with nearly $7 billion in security assistance since I took office. The next few days, we intend to announce more than 800 million more, including new advanced Western air defense systems for Ukraine, more artillery and ammunition, counter battery radars, additional ammunition for the HIMARS multiple launch rocket systems we've already given Ukraine. Russia, along with China, have been critical of the NATO summit. Speaking to the press while in Turkmenistan, President Putin said that NATO cares about its own interests in the Ukraine war. It is a means to protect their own interests. That is, with the hands of Ukrainians and the Ukrainian people, NATO members and leading NATO countries simply want to assert themselves, further assert their role in the world, confirm the leadership of their hegemony in the truest sense of the word, their imperial ambitions. We would like to warn NATO that hyping up the so-called China threat is completely futile. NATO should immediately stop its groundless accusations and provocative remarks against China. Well, our New York correspondent Susan Tarani is joining us live for more on this. Well, Susan, the NATO summit is now over. How much do you think has been achieved from this year's meeting?
Right. You know, many experts say that the real challenge will really lie when after Madrid, really after this summit, despite the fact that there's really been a strategic shift after this particular summit for the first time. We really saw uh, China at the forefront along with Russia. And it, we can probably, it's safe to say that NATO really now has expansionist ambitions, considering the fact that it's really uh, also not only focusing on you know, its own territory and its own region, but also focusing on the Indo-Pacific region as well, and perhaps utilizing the same resources against Russia post-Cold War, it might really do the same against China as well. And for better or worse, you know, um, that might prove to be, uh, you know, challenging for NATO member states and for the United States definitely as well moving forward, but also definitely a threat uh, to China. Uh, you know, on the one hand, it's been, uh, you know, the message on the forefront has been unity. But on the other hand, murmurs have been that ultimately, perhaps, you know, trying to find a diplomatic path forward may best be uh, the end game because of the challenges that many of these countries are facing at home, notably France. Germany and Italy, they're pressing for some kind of resolve, uh, while other countries, you know, like the United States and Britain are saying that we should go full fledged for a victory. Uh, that's in regard to uh, the Russia's Russia's invasion of Ukraine, because sort of there's been a shift in, in victory in the battlefield. Uh, so, you know, that's where the challenge will lie ultimately. But there's definitely been at least a shift uh, in NATO's ambitions moving forward. Susan, thank you. Stay where you are. We're going to come back to you in a few minutes when we uh, talk about another story.